Red Poland Fro knows photo.com and it's time for a rapid fire critique that would be the adorama picks rapid fire critique and we have a photo submitted by vasco silvia i believe it's spain i believe wait let me click a picture and see where it takes us it is spain viana do castillo that's my Spanish right there. Uh, anyway, so we have 10 photos selected here. Uh, I it said four, EOS fourth, oh, what's a 400D? I never know what the 400D is. Is, is it a rebel? Well, anyway, it doesn't matter. Let's talk about the images right here. So here is the very first image. I love black and white. Everybody knows I love black and white. The criticisms that I have for this uh, you know, it's a 17 to 40 lens. So I believe that's what it was a 17, sorry, 17 to 50 Sigma 2.8 is what it said. And what I, what I think the thing is here is that you're too close. If you're going to shoot wide and be close, you know, it's good that the subject isn't looking at you, but you know, these are the type of things that you create some dimension when you shoot with like a 70 to 200, if you have it, or, or that 50 millimeter 1.8 from a, from a little further back. Cause you can get some horizontal stuff from it, but all in all, it, the editing is right on the editing is great. The, the black and white is very nice. It's a nice thick edit. It's just that there's not a lot of separation here. And it's, you, you know, it's, it's just a little awkward, I think for a wide angle shot, the way that it is, but I like how you have the scale here for weighing the fish when you decide to purchase it. I don't know if I would buy fish out of a bucket, but that's just me. Maybe that's what goes on here because it's caught like fresh right there. So let's move on to the next one. We've got this called the Halls of Gloom. Now, is this a haunted attraction? I don't know. Uh, it's a little awkward um, again, but I mean here it looks like the camera's laying down is being you know left on the ground capturing somebody walking and, the, and they just look awkward kind of zombie-esque um i think the angle hurts it a little bit it may actually be too low i i know that i like low angles but in this case it may be slightly too low because it's along the ground but maybe a vertical in this situation would have brought the image back together because you would have gotten some of the the height out of it it's just just the way that the person is awkwardly moving if it was like a a zombie type shot then yeah i'd totally be for it being this low because it's awkward i mean it says halls of gloom so maybe it has something to do with that uh but let's move on to the next one so we've got a sleeping little girl here uh with the family it, it we're trying to see what they're watching obviously it says drooling nap ah yes there's drool down her face that's awfully awkward right there um it's <laughs> And I don't mean to come off harsh with, with a critique. It's just uh, I want to be straight up honest when I'm looking at it and, and talking about an image that grabs me versus an image that doesn't. This is one of those images that doesn't grab me personally if I was looking at it in a portfolio. Um, if this is a photo of somebody that you know, then maybe it has a little bit more of a, a connection because you have a connection with the subject. If this is just a random person out on the street that you captured a photo of, to me, it... it it's just, it's lacking because there's not much interest other than somebody is drooling while they're sleeping. But like I said, if it's a family member or fit into a photo story, then it could play a good part because the processing is very nice. The exposure and all and composition is right on and, and things like that. I'm just trying to be honest and I'm, I'm not, you know, don't yell at me for critiquing this way. It's just, yeah, I'll, I'll keep going. Um, so now we have another shot from the back. Uh, this is a little better because we've got a guy watching what is going on. I don't know what is going on. If they're playing a game, what's it say? Solitude. Oh, so it's a person off to the side. So maybe they're just, yeah. I mean, it looks like they're playing a game. What I like about these images is that, they, it, that the photographer left enough room to see that this person is alone and in a distance... There are other people, thus why it's called solitude. But if we were to, if, if the background was to totally be blown out or totally be in focus, then it would have taken away from the image. But I think this image is spot on with the way that it's composed and the way that the background is just enough, you know, just blurry enough to give you that effect that the person sitting here and you want to try to figure out, are they upset? Are they off on their own for certain reasons? Were they sent to a timeout? Who knows? But this one, much better. And then this, that's that's solid. I love solid black and white portraits, headshots. I mean, the head scarf is great here. Um, I'm, I 
don't know if it's called a headscarf or what it's called, but beautiful. The eyes, right, look at this. You can see the photographer. You are amazing is what it says. You can see the photographer inside the eyes. What amazing light and contrast. A great processing job done here. Really, really love this process. Love the, the, the white separation and the black. There's great contrast. I love high contrast shots. Uh, I would possibly even say bump in even more contrast to make these eyes go boom, pump that black and white and make it go boom a little bit more. Um, but I love this shot. The eyes are great. The reflection in the eyes are really good as well. Nice composition. I don't mind that this part is cut off over here and that there's some dead space here because of the way that the face, the head is tilted. I think it's, it's, it's tilted on this axis and then the eyes are looking down and you're drawn right into the eyes. So love that shot a lot. Um, what's this is called hexagon passage. So under a bridge, we got a vertical and we've got a person walking by. Um, it's not grabbing me as much just because it's, it's, there's not a uber ton of interest going on here. Um, in this case, for the hexagon part, if that's what you were going for, then I would say get closer, fill the frame wider um, with a wider angle lens and show just the hexagons, like square off and just do a straight on shot here. Because even here, we're off on a little bit of a skewed angle. It's just, it's just one of those shots that doesn't, there's not enough going on in it to explain to, you know, to give me that feel of, I know what's going on here. I've got a person walking under a bridge. Do they have a cat? They may, that person may have a camera. It could be a friend of the photographer, but I'm just pointing out, you know, for everybody out there, if you, you know, you see something like this, think about your images when you're shooting and go, does, does the viewer get to understand what, can they figure out what's going on in this image based off of just the shot and maybe the name of it or a short description do we have a short description? What is wrong? Short description. I don't know what's up going on with my mind, my brain. The, the things aren't firing as words are coming out in the wrong place. But, um, so, you know, remember that when people are looking at your portfolio online or you send it to them, you do not get to explain every single image. You kind of want the images to be able to be self-explanatory so that you have a better you know, chance of somebody getting it. So when I look at the shot, I don't quite get it. And my feedback would be uh, to do a different type of composition, especially based on the name hexagon passage to really focus in on the hexagon, squ uh, hexagon squares on the hexagon shapes and do a tight shot of that. So moving on to the next one. I like this. I like the angle that it's not straight down the tube. I like that, it, that the leading lines are drawing us through it, but we stop at the person who's looking up at the light and we're trying to figure out what dope tunnel <laughs> dope tunnel too. I guess this is where people buy drugs or smoke drugs or do drugs or share drugs or whatever they do. But what I like about it is, I mean, I love that you can still see all of the circle running, 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 running and running and running and running and running. Yeah. That they constantly go. And I love that this lights here and I love that this lights here. And this photo is much stronger this time because the person is standing right here. I guess they fit the description for dope tunnel. They got a hoodie and I'm not saying that all people that wear hoodies are drug dealers, but in this case to fit the description, this looks like a dope deal is about ready to happen. Uh, but I like this shot. The depth of field is fine. It does, you know, let's look at it. We've got this shot as a whole that works. Remember, when you're putting photos together, I'm, I don't know that they didn't take another photo just like this or in a different angle or something like that. Um, but one thing I could see is going with a more shallow depth of field, getting a little closer to the subject. This is a secondary shot. I like this shot right here. But remember, when you're out on location, take one shot, but then rethink how you could shoot it in another way. So you, one, you're not cropping later. And two, you're coming up with a, a whole different angle to possibly give a client. Because you want to give the client what they want, but then give them what they need. So you're, it's your job to capture that. Give them what they want, but then give them what your style calls for so that you give them something that they're looking for and then something extra that they didn't really you know, know they were getting. And sometimes they like that because they didn't realize that you were going to capture something that just grabs their attention. So I like this shot, but it would be cool to come in a little lower uh, and blow the background out a little more, focusing on the subject, possibly vertically, and having just this type of composition from the top of the light down to here, over to here, because then the, the, the rule of thirds plays. We've got the subject would be on the left, 
That's that's how I would compose that shot. Let's take a look. See, so you could do this on the computer. That's yeah, that would make a really cool shot the way that I have that composed right now. All right, let's move on to the next one. This this is nice. All right, ride in the mist. This is great. Uh, if the if the bicyclist was any further to the right, more of the center of the frame, it wouldn't be as strong. But because the bicyclist is on the left-hand side of the frame, it is great. And, and basically that they're silhouetted, the contrast is awesome. The, the, the background being that you can still see the mist and the trees or whatever is there really, really adds to this photo. I love that the lines are perfectly straight all the way across. It's even. We've got a box here, a box here, a box here, a box here. This is leading lines when you talk about it. you got leading lines, you've got symmetry, you have rule of thirds, you have just so many different rules of composition playing in this photo. Some would call it balance also, meaning that this isn't exactly in the middle because this is, if this was in the middle, the balance would be thrown off. Having this down here, it, it's balanced very well. We've got the rule of thirds with having the subject over here. We've got the leading lines where you're drawn across the image. Where is this bike going? This is a superb shot. This is one of the best in the, in the group. And I'll go back through again and I'll point out my favorite that I think are the best of the group when we get there. I love this shot a lot. Um, moving forward, we've got this one called In the Triangle of Light. It's obvious because the person is literally in the triangle of light. They're walking through this tunnel. I don't know if it's the dope tunnel number three. The other one was dope tunnel number two. Um, it's another tough one because it's it's like, what is the focus? Is the fo focus the person in the triangle of light? If that was the case, I would, I would want to see it tighter on them. Or is the focus on the art on the wall and something like that? So it's, it's a tough one for me to look at and understand exactly what's going on and see and basically figure out what is what this is up to um so it's not one of the stronger ones in terms of editing in terms of processing and um and, and capturing that's right on but i just think that this composition is also a, is a little awkward um if the focus was on the triangle let me get out my trusty photo square thing here that would be an amazing composition and by what i'm talking about here i wish i could draw a box on the screen this would be the composition from about here over and up oop, up to the light and probably right about here boom would make a really nice composition if this was to be redone uh and that's just something to think about because you, you could probably look at this and see that the composition is a little awkward that this one would have been better horizontal with the wall maybe a top of the wall down to here leaving a little bit of extra room about here and boom that would have been a cool composition to get it now i'm not in the situation where the photographer was so i don't know exactly what was going through their mind or if this was just a random thing where a person walked and they captured the image so i'm not being harsh on the photographer or or just being i'm not i'm not being mean i'm just critiquing it in a way that i'm just saying it based off of what i know and what i see so let's move on to the next one. This is the last one. We've got Puppy on a Leash. It's pretty much a puppy on a leash. Uh, it's cute. The one thing that, that, that throws me off a little bit is the off angles. It's kind of making me dizzy that this is running down this way. Uh, if you were going to get down on this angle, then, then then try to straighten it up. Other than that, I like the color. I like the, the focus on the, dog's, on the dog's head. It's just that that, caddy, that angle off that off angle axis stuff really throws me off personally, but that's my personal thing. Uh, if it works for you, it works for you just for this critique purpose. I just think if we focused in on the dog a little more and straightened it up, so it didn't look like the dog was sliding downhill, I think it would have been stronger. So let's go back. I'll pinpoint the best of the best, best of the best right here. I think this is even stronger than the portrait shot. Uh, this is very good. This is one of the, this is like top four. Um, not the hexagon one. This one is number two. This is very good. So I'd make the tunnel one number three. I'd make this one number four. And and I think that's it. So this is definitely on the right path. It's close. And and that's what critiquing is all about. It's about, you know, when I when I talk when I ran into Zach Arias in New York at the photo show, he was just coming out from a portfolio review. That's right, a professional photographer like Zach Arias is taking his portfolio that he just made to get hammered in his words. He's getting a beating by the panelists, the people, the, the photo editors, the photo buyers, the art buyers that are sitting there looking at his work. They're ripping him apart. And he just came out of there and he was like, wow. He's like, they're ripping me apart. But it's all good because it's helping me see 
you know, things that I could do better. So you're not stagnating. You're not, you're not stagnant in your photography. You're able to grow with it. And that's what critiquing it's about is about. It's not about ripping on somebody's work. It's about pointing things out and giving ideas. And then the photographer takes that and decides to do whatever they want to do with it, whether they want it to be, you know, whether they take it with a grain of salt or they go, okay, you know what? I like the image, but I hear what you're saying. I may try, I, I will try that in the future. That's what critiquing is all about. It's all about seeing, you know, hearing what people have to say. Sometimes we don't like it. And I know I don't like it, but sometimes people don't have all of the information that you have because you took the photo, but just take some of these tips that are in here. If you could take one or two tips out of this and real and, and think about it when you're shooting and get something that is your best shot ever, then it's well worth it as a critique. So, you know, that's about it. I hope you guys enjoyed this critique. I know it was one of the more harsh ones that I've done so far, but you know, there's positives in here. There's, there's, there's a handful of great images to build off of. And there's other images that are on the border that with, with some little tweaks when you go out and shoot again, they're going to take you over the top and be spot on with a full on great 10 shots. If you'd like to submit your photos for a rapid fire critique, please send a link to your top 10 best photos. Um, they can be on Flickr. They can be on 500 picks, anything that's a gallery, just send one link. Don't send 10 separate links to Flickr, uh, because I'm not going to go, you know, I'm not going to be able to go through them. That's why when they're in a gallery setting like this, it's much easier to go through and critique and 500 picks does a good job as well. So you can send that to fronosphoto at gmail.com. Be sure to put the subject line at picks rapid fire critique. And I will try to do my best to get to as many as possible as we go on. So, you know, I think you're on the right path. Um, Vasco, there's some really, really nice shots here, and then there's some that are on the border, like I said. So hopefully this helps. Leave a comment when you get to see the video and let me know if this was too harsh, over the top, or spot on. Uh, so, you know, nice job. Keep up the good work. Keep shooting, and keep seeing the world as if it's an image. Jared Poland, froknowsphoto.com. See ya!